What's up, guys? Welcome to another week of Prep, Cook, Plate, Repeat. This week's episode, we're making Piri Piri Chicken and a Moroccan Carrot Raisin Salad. If you don't know what Piri Piri Chicken is, I'm going to show you what it is. Let's do it. So, first thing for the Piri Piri Chicken is we need to make the base, which is the marinade for the chicken. Before we even break down the chicken, I'll show you how to do that. We have to create the base first and marinate it. So, mortar and pestle is the best way. I, I think so because it really, you get really the flavor of everything instead of chopping it or putting it in a food processor, just in my personal opinion. Okay, so mortar and pestle. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get a red pepper. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the root out. And I'm going to cut everything into really small and manageable pieces to go in here. It's going to make less work for me when I start to grind everything. So for those of you who don't know what Piri Piri chicken is, it's big in North African cuisine. Um, there's a specific pepper that is named after, the Piri Piri pepper. It comes from North Africa. It is extremely, extremely spicy, like super hot. So those are very hard to find. We really can't find them here. You can probably find it online somewhere. Um, a dried pepper is not the same effect. You need that fresh, that fresh bite. You want that freshness. So in replace, I'm going to use a jalapeno instead. Um, so I added half of a red pepper, small dice. I threw it in there. Now I'm going to add a jalapeno. Take the seed out. And again, I'm going to make this small dice. This is going to really make our cuts, our, our work easier. Yeah, Piri Piri chicken is really, really good. They serve it with a sauce. We're going to make extra marinade because we're going to use that to flavor our chicken, but then we're going to use that to top our chicken off when it's done cooking. All righty. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. Alrighty, so next we need to do is garlic. I'm gonna smash my garlic. I'm not gonna chop, I'm just gonna smash it. I'm gonna throw it right in. Okay. Before I add anything else, I wanna start breaking this down. Because if I start to add more items in here, it's gonna get too hard. If I add liquid, I'm not really gonna be able to get that paste effect that I want in here. So. Always, anytime I make paste, I always use a little bit of salt. Salt breaks down the, um, the barrier, the protein barrier, and it starts to, to draw out moisture from whatever the, if it's meat or if it's a veggie, whatever it is, it starts to draw out moisture. So use mortar and pestle and just really smash that up nicely. Be careful that none of that jalapeno water or juice gets into your eye. Because if it does, good luck to you. Just be careful. Start with little hits like I'm doing here. Just to really smash everything up. And then start to grind it. You can already see this juice, this water at the bottom. That's what you want. I love using water and pestle. Makes me feel manly. Okay, it's starting to get there. It's not where I want it to be, but it's starting to get there. This is really, really fragrant full. It is really, oh man, it smells amazing. Oh, careful, see? I got myself. All right, so that's good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some parsley and some cilantro. So I got some parsley here, and I got cilantro. I'm just gonna give this a rough chop. Again, making it easier to break everything down. Now, interesting with the piri piri chicken is that the piri piri is also found in Portugal. And what ended up happening was it was, um, I forgot what country it was, it might have been it might have been Kenya or Nigeria. I'm not too sure which country it was in, in Africa, but there was a small village where Portuguese 
went and settled there. And the Portuguese actually brought over the pepper with them from Portugal because it was found there as well. So it's, it does have African and Portuguese ancestry to it. So smash that up. Nice. Nice. That looks good. Okay, next. We need some acid now. We're going to get acid from two places. We're going to get acid from red wine vinegar. I'm going to go in. One, two, three, four, five teaspoons red wine vinegar. We're going to add some olive oil, about two teaspoons. Salt and pepper. As always, we need to season. Lemon. Squeeze that lemon right in. Okay, nice. So, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of spices, what we need. I like to stick with a little bit of smoked paprika for a nice smoky feel. I'm gonna open this up back to be easier. A little smoked paprika. I'm gonna go about a teaspoon right in and a little teaspoon of harissa. Harissa is also a North African condiment. It is in powder form and is also in paste form. It's pretty, it's like a hot pepper paste. I'm gonna give that a nice mix. I'm gonna slowly start to introduce everything here. Everything is pretty much crushed up at this point. There's nothing else to crush up. That looks nice. That looks real good. Smell it. it smells really nice. Okay. So, one last thing we need in there is some tomato paste. I get my uh, handy dandy can opener here. Let's see if this thing works. Works. Nice. I'm gonna go in with one, two teaspoons right in. Is that a good mix? Beautiful. Nice blend of spices here. You got some heat, you got some sour, you got some acid. So it's all gonna really pair well together. I'm gonna give it a little taste. See how it tastes. Oh yeah, that's really good. I'm gonna let that hang out, do its thing. You can make that a day in advance, two days in advance. It'll sit for a while because it's there's vinegar in there, so you're kind of preserving everything that's in there already. Okay, so next thing to do is our chicken. You can do the chicken, you can cook this chicken whole if you like, just like this. There's nothing wrong with that. But I like to kind of not break it down fully, but we, it's called spatchcock. And all spatchcock means is that we're going to remove the back breast, which is kind of not the back breast, but the back, I guess, tailbone of the chicken we're going to remove and then we're going to break the breast plate and I'm going to remove these little wing tips because these are going to burn up on us. So grab your knife and what you want to do is when you whatever piece of meat you're breaking down if it's even if it's fish whatever it is it tells you where to cut it right just like it just needs to know the anatomy see that I don't have to cut through bone this cartilage there so it's going to come right out. You just have to find the natural separation of, every, of anything. See, I just need to find it, and it comes right off. I don't have to hack at a bone. So next, flip it over. You could, you could feel the backbone. If you put your fingers here and run down its spine, you can see where it is. You can also take a look at here, and it kind of shows you as well. It, it's right here. That's where it's going to go. So I like to do this with a pair of shears, kitchen shears like really thick scissor, scissors, and that's gonna be your best friend. So, best bet, start here first. Take a look. 
want you to go ahead and make a cut. It shouldn't be that hard. Again, it's natural separation. You're just cutting kind of cartilage. You're not cutting bone. So you don't have to hack at anything. Now I'm starting to get the majority of it, right? It's starting to come out. Just keep going. And just follow its natural separation. That's all just backbone and some rib plate. We're not hacking again at bones. That's how you know that you're cutting it correctly. Keep following it. Turn it around. Cut the other side until you get all the way to the end. There. Easy. Boom. That's the back piece. This is the spine of the chicken. Comes right out. That's called spatchcocking. Now, I've seen people spatchcock, and I've seen people remove the breastplate here of the chicken. We don't have to really do that. The reason I don't like to do it too much is because that breastplate prevents the chicken from overcooking, right? Just like with dark meat, how, long, how much longer it takes to cook thighs, that's because of the dark meat one and because there's always a bone in there. The bone prevents from overcooking. So I'm going to leave this bone in here. I'm going to flip this over. Okay. I'm just going to, you heard that? That's a crack. You're just breaking the rib plate. You're just breaking its breast plate. That's all it is. Okay. So that's pretty much spat cocking. Super easy. Okay. So the best way to marinate this is in the Ziploc bag that I have here. I'm going to go right in. I'm going to put this inside. Okay. To this, I'm going to add a little salt and pepper. Even though I know our seasoning has, our, our marinade has it, I just want to make sure that salt is in here. S salt and pepper are very two different things. We pepper. If you salt, it's to enhance flavors. It's to bring out the flavor of everything else. Okay. Pepper changes flavor. Okay. Also, by salting it, pre-salting it, we're kind of, this is also known as os osmosis. Like I was talking about, when you add salt to something, you're breaking down the protein barrier. It's also known as brining. When you take the chicken or something, you submerge it into water, and it's a flavored water. If it has sugar and salt, and it stays in there for two days, it's known as osmosis. You're kind of penetrating the, the barrier. So, chicken's in the bag. Marinate. Now, I don't want to spoil this and go in there with my hands. I'm going to remove it with a spoon because we're going to save this for later. It's going to go on top. I'm going to do about two, I'll say four altogether teaspoons. And now I get my hand. I go in there. I get inside the cage. Make sure you get inside the cage. Other side. And boom. This you can probably marinate up to two days. A day is good, but two days is for really intense flavor. Just let it hang out, zip out the bag, put it away, and you're golden. And then I said this will last you for a few days. It's vinegar based, so you're good with that. We're gonna clean up here. We're gonna let our chicken sit for a little bit, and then we're gonna start making a carrot raisin salad. Be right back. All right, guys. So chicken's marinating, doing its thing. Next thing we're gonna make is the Moroccan carrot raisin salad. It's from Morocco. It's the most popular salad out of Morocco. It's pretty, pretty well known over here. So raisins, got about half a cup of raisins right in, get in there, break them up with your hand. I like to rehydrate the raisins. All we're going to do is add a little bit of red wine vinegar. Just a touch. That's going to help bring a little life to them. And I'm going to add a little pinch of harissa powder right in. I'm going to put these aside. Let them do its thing. Next, carrots. Grater, and you grate. Chopping it by hand won't be the same. You need this. You need the grated effect. Right? Think of like when you're making coleslaw and you need carrot for coleslaw. This is the best way to do it. When you do the salad, you got to grate it. So you'll probably be good with two carrots, depending on how large they are. 
two or three carrots, depending. And that'll probably feed like three people, four people. So you'd be good with that. It's a super simple salad. There's only a few ingredients. It's carrots, it's raisins, acid, red wine vinegar. This is the acid, olive oil, a little bit of a harissa. I know people use cumin. If you don't want to use harissa, you can't find harissa. Cumin is totally fine. Um, red pepper flakes are cool too. So you can sub things out if you like. Uh, also put a little parsley in this one. And this was not usually traditional what I'm going to do today, but I'm going to put something called chayote. And I'll show you what that is when I get to it. Okay. So that's what your carrots look like. Grated. Put them in the same bowl as the raisins. I'm going to cut up uh, another carrot or two and be right back. All right. So carrots are ready. Next, chayote. Never heard of chayote. Chayote's pretty much like a squash. Um, comes from the Caribbean. It's really big in Jamaica. They use it for a lot of things. You can pickle it. You can put it in stews. You can do it's very, very versatile. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to remove the core. See here? It has a little pit. Carefully, without cutting yourself. You're going to use a knife or you can use a spoon. Pull it right out. Looks like an apple, actually. Tastes a little, uh, tastes a, a, t a little bitter. It's a little. Not that much. It has no, it doesn't have too much flavor. But I like it for a crunchy texture in this one. Okay. So next, I'm going to treat it just like we did the carrot and we're going to grate it. Same exact way. It's a good way to build forearms and shoulders. Okay. And the next one. And it holds a lot of water too. So you see when you're grating this, a lot of water is going to come out of it. Boom. There it is. Chayote. I'm going to take the chayote right in. Next, we're going to add parsley. No stems in this one. Just parsley. The leaves are small. Go ahead and just pluck them and throw them right in. If they're a little big, you can just tear them. We just want the leaf. This is going to add like a little fresh element, a little pepperiness that the parsley provides. It's going to, it's going to be nice. It's going to complement the sweetness of the carrot and sweetness of the raisins. Okay, that's ready. Let that hang out in your bowl. Let's make the dressing. So for your dressing, olive oil, red wine vinegar, salt, pepper, pepper right in, salt, about a pinch of each. Harissa, this is gonna complement that sweetness. You can use paste if you want, or you can use a little bit of powder. That's like a nice pinch right there. Honey, next. Right in. That's gonna counterbalance the acid in here. It's gonna give us like a nice little spicy vinaigrette. We need a whisk. Whisk everything up. Perfect. That's what you want right there. You want it loose. Right over the stuff. Boom. Get in there with a fork or a knife or what I have here. Just mix it up nicely. You want the dressing to coat everything nicely here. Yep, that's gonna be really nice. I wouldn't suggest making this, this in a day in advance because it's gonna get way too soggy. 
you still want everything to have a bite. Right? So if you do this a day in advance, the vinegar is going to break down whatever you have in here. And it's going to be all mush. That's not what you want. You want this to have a nice bite. All right. So we're going to let this hang out in the refrigerator. And we're going to start making the chicken. Be right back. All right. So next, we got to cook our chicken. And let this oil heat up nicely. Now, you can use a cast iron. You can cook this on the grill and the barbecue. You can cook it in the oven. I have a grill pan that I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hard sear on one side, get those lines in there, maybe give it a little turn, get those cross sections that we like. And this pan is going right into the oven. I got the oven set at 425 degrees. Once it goes from here, flips over into there, you're probably looking at like 30 minutes or so, about that. If you have a thermometer, that's even better, 165. Um, the breast and then and the la and the thigh you're looking at like 175 on the thigh around there. So this feels pretty hot right now. I'm gonna take my chicken. I'm gonna go breast down, breast side down first. Find so carefully, just like that. Hold on. There we go. Just make sure it's nice and flat. You can put another pan on top of here if you like, just to really get that hard sear. You can do that. But let this go for about six or seven minutes on one side. Then we're gonna we're gonna angle it real quick, get those cross sections, and we're gonna go right in the oven. So we'll be back in a few minutes. We gave our chicken a little flip. We're gonna give it another flip now, carefully. That's what we want right there. Some nice caramelization. It's okay if it's a little burnt bits. That's totally fine. All good. Give it a turn. I got some thyme. I'm going to throw it right in. Just like that. You should hear that popping. That's what you want to hear. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go into the oven from here. Probably about 25 minutes and half an hour. We'll check on it in a little bit, so we'll be right back. Salad is done, chicken is done, harissa, condiment, uh, piri piri sauce, done. All right, so it's plate up. Now I'm gonna leave the chicken whole, because I like it, the presentation style. You can more, you're more than free to cut it out the board. You want to break it down, totally up to you. But go ahead and put it right on the plate here. Kind of serve this like family style. It's a great meal. You know, if you have friends over, if you get in a family of four, you know, this chicken. Chicken's pretty cheap right now, so it's a good way to make a nice meal. Carrot salad. Give it a little mix. And we're gonna put some to build like a little uh, fortress here. Top this off with a piri piri sauce. You know, we leave on the side uh, to just put a little bit on the bird and right around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great dish, really easy to make. Just it's just time, just kind of letting the marinade penetrate the chicken. You know, like I said, for a day at least, two days. Next, we'll serve this on there if you like. All right, there you have it. Piri piri chicken, piri piri uh, sauce, 
and a nice Moroccan carrot raisin salad. Thanks for watching this week on Prep, Cook, Play, Repeat. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Like I said before, we are offering virtual cooking classes, uh, customized classes, and upcoming classes. Everything is on prepcookplayrepeat.com. We'll see you next week.